you're not finished the feedback form, you can give to me after the break time. Okay? So let's continue with the class. So the last time, we are talking about interest rate parity, and I asked you to look at this diagram for at home so you can understand. Can you understand this diagram? So can you close the door at the back, please? So here we have alternative investments. One alternative, invest $1,000 in the U.S. We're from the U.S., okay? Another alternative, send our money around to Britain. If we invest in the US, we're going to get the US interest rate. If we invest in the UK, we have to change our money to pounds at the spot rate today. We need to invest the pounds, we're going to get the pound interest rate. And then we need to change the money back to dollars at the end. Okay? So we're going to look at uh, some example. Okay, so this example is what we're going to look at. Uh, a trader with a thousand dollars could invest in the US at three percent. After one year, how much money will he have? Hmm? One thousand multiplied by one point zero three. Okay. How much is that? $1,030. What if we send the money to the UK? We can exchange $1,000, we'll get £500 at today's spot rate. What is today's spot rate? Are you sure? One pound is two dollars. Okay? We invest our 500 pounds for one year in the British account. We get the British interest rate, 2.4.9%. So we earn 512 pounds at the end of the year. At the end of the year, we translate this 512 pounds back into dollars. There's only one number in which we can make this exactly equals to $1,030, okay? That number is going to be 2.01, okay? Is the forward rate the same as the spot rate? Spot rate was one pound is two dollars, okay? The forward rate, what one pound is two dollars and one cents. Is it the same? No. Why is it different? Interest rate. Interest rate is different, okay? So I get, I'm going to get back uh, less money in the pounds, but the exchange rate is better. I get back less money in pounds because the interest rate is lower. Okay? If I change this money back, if I change this money back at this exchange rate, I'm going to get 520, I'm going to get 1,024 dollars. Okay? That wouldn't be the same as 1,030. So we make this exchange rate if we use this exchange rate, we get 1,030. So it's the same. So does it matter whether I send my money to the UK or keep in the US? Doesn't matter, right? If I keep in the US, I get 1,030. If I send to the UK, I end up, after all this effort, with 1,030. So which are you going to do? Keep it in the US. There's some transaction cost here, okay? time and extra money, okay? So the point of the IRP is that this forward rate, the future exchange rate that's given by the bank, should be this only one answer. It should be the answer that means that we get the same amount of money no matter what country we invest in, even though the countries have different interest rates. So here is here is this on the on the graph, okay? First alternative, invest in the US at 3%. We get 1,030. Second alternative, change our thousand dollars into 500 pounds at this exchange rate, okay? Then we invest our money in the UK. Is the interest rate the same as the US? No. Is it higher or lower? Lower. 
right? So in one year, we're going to get back this plus the interest of 512. Okay? Then step three, repatriate, I mean send the money back to the US. Okay, now we have the forward rate is 201. The bank tells us this forward rate. Okay, now, today, the bank makes the exchange rate for next year. Okay, fixed exchange rate for next year, this one. And then when we change back with this one, we get back $1,030. So it's the same. So when the bank makes this forward rate, they, that's the kind of calculation they do, the difference between the interest rate. So when we make a forward contract, that is, or we talk about the forward rate, that is a, a fixed future exchange rate. Okay? Do you understand fixed? Yes. So the bank is going to change the money at the end of the year at that exchange rate. Okay? That is a contract. Do you understand contract? Yes. Can the bank change their mind? No. Can you change your mind? No. No. Okay, we make a contract that we're going to have this exchange rate next year. So there's only one forward rate. Okay? It must be the case that the forward rate is equals to two dollars and one cent per pound. Why? If it was not equals to two dollars and one cent a pound, a clever trader could make money with one of the following strategies. So let's look at the way we could make money. If the forward rate was greater than two dollars and one cents, what am I going to do? And you tell me, if you're a clever trader, if the bank tells me the forward rate is higher than 201, let's say it's 210, okay? The interest rate in the UK, 2.49%. In the US, the interest rate is 3%, okay? Would this be the pound getting stronger or weaker? Stronger, right? This would be a stronger pound. So what would you do? If you know the interest rate is 2.49 in the UK and 3 in the US, okay? The exchange rate today is this, and in one year, the bank makes a contract at this exchange rate. Okay, then what are you going to do? They borrow the US and invest the UK. Yes, invest in pounds. The pounds are getting it's getting stronger. So am I going am I sure I'm going to make money? <coughs> Can the bank change their mind? No. Say, oh, I made a mistake, sorry. No. They can't, right? So everybody would do that. That would be an arbitrage situation. So let's look at the example, right? I'm going to borrow the dollars today in the US, exchange my dollars, my borrowing wage is 3%, right? Exchange my dollars for pounds, I'm going to get 500 pounds. Invest at 2.49%. Then, when I change back into dollars, it's going to be more than $1,030, okay? 512 pounds multiplied by 210. Can anybody do this calculation? 512 multiplied by 2.10. What's the answer? How many dollars will I get back? Ten thousand seven hundred and fifty. So I made a really big profit. I had one thousand. Now I have ten thousand. Do you mean one thousand and seventy-five? No. This number. Five hundred and twelve multiplied by two point one zero. What's the answer? So one thousand seventy-five dollars, right? Minus one thousand and thirty, which I would have got in the U.S. if I left in the U.S. So I would have made a profit of forty-five dollars if the exchange rate was here. Okay. So can that exist in the real life? Should that exist in the real life? No. Everybody can make a profit like that. No. no. Oh, so that's why we have forward rate, right? So this is the example. Borrow in the US, change to pounds. This is all the same as the last one. The difference is, when we send back to the US, the exchange, we're going to get back more than 1,030, okay? 
repay our dollar loan, we've spent this money to repay our loan, and we're left with $45. We're left with more money. <coughs> okay? So, uh, in this case, the pound is getting stronger, the dollar is getting weaker. Okay? A little bit like what the speculators do, right, when in the currency crisis. They expect the dollar to get weaker, the US has a crisis, they're going to get a loan in dollars, sell the dollars, buy the other currency, and when we change back, we'll be, have more money left. On the other hand, what are we going to do if the bank makes uh, 190? One pound is equal to 190. What will we do here? Hmm? Pound got weaker, so what are we going to do? Investing. So what what are we going to get a loan of? Borrow the UK and invest. Yes, yeah, so we're going to borrow the pounds and invest in dollars. Do the way around, okay? And we can make a profit that way. Okay, just the opposite way. So we borrow the pounds at two point four nine percent. Exchange the pounds, we get one thousand dollars. Invest one thousand dollars at three percent, we get one thousand and thirty. Change this back into pounds. So can you tell me if the exchange rate is if we have one thousand and thirty dollars, okay, and the exchange rate is one pound is equal to one ninety dollars, how many pounds are we going to get back? Somebody do the calculation on the calculator. We have this many dollars, we want to get change it to pounds. Divide it by 1.9. Divide this number by 1.9. How many pounds is that? Well, we'll get back 542 pounds, right? How much do we need to pay back for our loan? 512, right? Our loan plus the interest, 500 plus the interest. How much profit did we make? 30. 30, okay? So what the interest rate parity theory is saying is that we shouldn't have this situation, we shouldn't have the other situation, so there's only one forward rate, okay? That forward rate is decided by the difference between the interest rates. So in this case, we borrow in, in the UK, deposit in the US, change our money back, it will be worth more. Do you have any question about that? In this case, though, uh, if the US, uh, if the UK central bank method, what's the central bank method? Uh, take this, they are, uh, the, this current trade is to make a profit, so the... So, so it doesn't exist, the bank, this doesn't exist. This is an arbitrage. Arbitrage shouldn't exist. You can't do this. Why? Because no bank is going to give you this forward rate. Okay? The mistake is the bank would give you this forward rate. So the bank is going to give you the correct forward rate, which is 201. You call up all the banks, they're all going to say the same thing, right? One year forward contract is going to be, one pound will be $2.01. <coughs> You call up one bank, and one bank says $1.90. You say, great, I'll get a loan in pounds and deposit in dollars. Right? Do you understand? So it has to be this, this one. Then you don't have that. <coughs> Carry trade is, is, is uh, they don't make a forward contract. Okay? This is making the forward contract. If you make the forward contract, you're sure you can change your money at this exchange rate. Carry trade, they're not sure. So they're not sure they're going to make a profit. They're gambling. Okay? They don't make a forward contract. Okay? They're gambling that the one currency changes or not. In the future, the pound might be 190, or it might be 210. So carry trade is just leaving this open. It's gambling, that it goes in the direction they want it to go. Okay? But with the forward contract, we are tying, locking the exchange rate in the future. Okay? And this is uh, based on the IRP idea. So, and arbitrage. 
So we briefly mentioned about the PPC, we mentioned about McDonald's, and so on. So this IRP is one way of looking at the exchange rate, right? From this side, it means we can't make arbitrage, so that's why we should make the forward rate based on the interest rates, okay? But PPP, we're looking at it a different side. PPP, we're saying this country has higher inflation than this country. Over the long term, the exchange rate follows inflation. So, then interest rates follow inflation. So, we should use the interest rate to predict the future exchange rate. Okay? So, maybe I'll just draw on the board. It might be a little bit easier. It's a little bit complicated. So, over the long term, inflation. We're, when we talk about PPP, we're talking about inflation, right? Relative PPP. Purchasing power parity. Purchasing power. How much can I purchase with your money? Okay? So we have inflation difference we're talking about. Okay, so one country, Russia, has high inflation. Okay? Another country, Korea, low inflation. Which currency is going to get weaker? Russia. Russia. That's what PPP says. Okay? Low inflation currency gets stronger, high inflation currency gets weaker, right? So the next step is inflation difference. <laughs> then interest rate follows inflation. Okay, this is uh, if our country has high inflation, we also have a high interest rate. Okay? If our country has low inflation, we also have a low interest rate. Okay? Japan, low inflation, low interest rate. Russia, high interest rate, high inflation. Okay? China, high inflation, high interest rate. Korea, low inflation, low interest rate. Okay? Why does the interest rate follow inflation? Why doesn't inflation follow the interest rate? Can anybody tell me? Why does it interest rates follow inflation. So, the input low inflation means many people don't want to purchase, so the market, market person don't want loan. Yes, but we're more, we're more worried about the problem of high inflation. Central banks are not that worried about low inflation. They could be worried about deflation. But the problem is high inflation. If we have high inflation, what's the problem? with high inflation. Why don't we just live with high inflation? So Russian students, what are some problems with high living in a high inflation country? Savings, right? We have high inflation. Do old people like high inflation? Savings, but purchasing power of our savings is going down. Last year I could purchase two loaves of bread with 10 units of currency, okay? This year I can only purchase one loaf of bread with 10 units of currency. So I worked very hard all my life, I saved all my money, I'm happy, put it in the bank, it's going to be fine. Next thing there's high inflation. Right, I lose all my money. I have to go back and live with my son again. Right? I don't like my son. I have to be dependent on my son. Right? Because I don't, all my savings is gone. Okay, any other problems with high inflation? Hmm? Pensioners, it's not good for pensioners. Any other problems? People just want to spend their money today, right? People don't save money because they think, what's the point of saving money? Right? Let's go out and buy a new stereo or a new sofa. <laughs> just spend everything. Okay? Because it's not going to be worth anything next year. So people don't save much money, okay? So inflation, high inflation through history has been shown it's not that good for a country, okay? So we don't want high inflation, so how can we control inflation? When the Romans, do you know the ancient Romans? Do you know how they tried to control inflation? They made a law, you're not allowed to charge, and they wrote the law in stone, the prices in stone in the town. One loaf of bread is 10 denarii, and you're not allowed to charge more than 10 denarii. They wrote all the prices in stone. Anybody who charged a higher price 
they chop off their hand or send them to prison. <coughs> okay? Do you think that works well? Regulation? Just tell people you're not allowed to increase the price? Did that work well for the Romans? No. What do you think happened? It didn't work. There was a black market. Do you understand black market? Yes. Everybody sold things on the black market. It means illegally. Right? They sold their things illegally to the other people. So that's not going to work. So we have to use interest rate to control inflation. Okay? If we have high inflation, we rise the interest rate. People are going to save more money and spend less money. Prices should go down. Okay? We talked about that before. Okay? So interest rate follows inflation. So therefore, we can use the interest rate difference to predict the exchange rate. Okay? It works well in the long term, not in the short term. But it's used by the bank. Okay? So that's one reason why we can use the interest rate. And then the other one we just looked at was IRP, arbitrage. Okay? People shouldn't make arbitrage, so the forward rate should be based on the interest rate difference. Right? Forward rate is just our prediction of the future exchange rate. The bank makes. So the exchange rate between two countries should be equal to the ratio of the country's price level. So we, we mentioned this before, right? If, if gold is $300 in the US and $150 in the UK, then the exchange rate is $2 is one pound. Okay? So suppose the exchange rate is $1.25 is one euro. Inflation in the US is expected to be 3% in the next year, and it's going to be 5% in the eurozone. Okay? So then, which currency is going to get stronger? Yes, which currency will get weaker? Euro. Why? Inflation is higher in Europe. Does everybody understand? Yeah. Purchasing power is going to get less in Europe because inflation is higher. I can get less things for my money. My purchasing power is going down. Okay? So the exchange rate then will be, we use this equation, it's going to be, in this case, the dollar is on the left and the euro is on the right. So the dollar interest rate is on the top line. Your interest rate is on the bottom line. So this is the equation we use. Okay, so we have 125 multiplied by 1.03 over 1 multiplied by 1.05, and we get our answer. So that is our forward rate for next year. That's how we calculate the forward rate. If the euro is on the left and the dollar is on the right, then it's going to be the other way around. Okay? 105 will be on the top, 103 will be on the bottom. So the, I, this, this, these two things are the same. We talked about the IRP and the PPP. They both come to the same conclusion. The conclusion is we should use the interest rate to predict the exchange rate. Okay? And we use this equation. 1 plus the interest rate over 1 plus the interest rate. Okay? That will give us the... Uh, Future exchange rate. Okay. So just some notes we already mentioned. PPP doesn't hold in the real world for a variety of reasons. First reason, haircuts cost more in the developed world than the developing world. Okay. For example, shipping costs. Shipping costs also is different. Culture is different. Korean people like very luxurious fruit, right? Rather than another country. Uh, we looked at the Big Mac index, so we saw some countries undervalued, some countries overvalued. But the main thing we were looking at is the difference, how it changes. So if we look at this document, we can see uh, Japan and Korea. Do you think Japanese currency is undervalued or Korean currency is undervalued? In history, generally. Maybe the Japanese currency got very weak recently, but normally. 
Korean currency was undervalued against the Japanese currency. Okay? So here we can see uh, this is the market exchange rate, and this is the PPP exchange rate. PPP exchange rate is the exchange rate that would be correct between Korea and Japan. If I go to Japan and the haircut is the same price as Korea, the fruit is the same price as Korea, the hotel is the same price, everything is the same price, then we should have this exchange rate between Japan and Korea. This is the PPP exchange rate. Okay? Why is this line not staying the same over time? Why is it changing? In 1980, uh, 100 yen was 100 won. The same. 100 yen was 100 won. Okay? But now, we're in 2009, uh, we had, uh, it's now, 100 yen is 880 won. Okay? So why did it change? Can anybody tell me? This is before we look at the market rate. This is PPP rate based on prices. Why was 100 yen was, two, was 100 won in the past, and now it's 800 won? Why? Because of inflation, right? Inflation in Korea was higher. So this PPP rate is changing because of the change in inflation. <laughs> so the change in inflation in Korea is higher than Japan. Okay, so let's say a simple example, a haircut. I get a haircut in Korea in 1980. It costs me uh, peg one. <laughs> or let's say chon one. Right? For a haircut in 1980. Yeah. Okay, in Japan, how much was the haircut in 1980? At this exchange rate. So 100 yen is equals to 100 won. So it's the same. It's 1,000 yen. Okay? Now, in 2009, okay, uh, let's say that Japan stayed the same. Let's say there was no inflation in Japan, zero inflation in Japan. So a haircut still costs 1,000 yen. Okay? Probably there was, anyway, Japan has low inflation. Okay, so it could be not much different. But in Korea, how much does a haircut cost now? 10,000. 10,000. Hmm? 10, 8,800? 8, you pay 10,000? That's 2009, you see. It's 2015 now. So 10, 000, right? So we can see no inflation in Japan, a lot of inflation in Korea. So the exchange rate has to change. Okay? According to PPP, the price of a haircut should be the same in Japan and Korea. Do you understand? The price of the haircut should be the same all around the world. The exchange rate should be based on that. So here, according to PPP, the exchange rate is 1 to 1. Okay? Here, the exchange rate is 8.8 .8 to 1. Okay? Korea had higher inflation. Because of inflation, the PPP changed. If we look, this is the market exchange rate. Market exchange rate. Okay, so what was the real situation? The real situation is that uh, the market exchange rate is going to be 281 is going to be equals to 100 yen. Okay, so uh, we, have, we have different situation in the market. Okay, so in this case, the market case uh, <clears throat> the Korean won basically is undervalued against the Japanese yen. Okay? But does that change? No, the Korean won is always undervalued against the Japanese yen. Right? Why? Why is the Korean won always... Would I, if I was trading currencies here and I say, oh, Korean won is undervalued against the yen. I think the Korean won is going to get stronger. So we're going to get equilibrium, right? So I'm going to make the trade, okay? I think the Korean won will get stronger to make the equilibrium. You understand equilibrium? Yes. 
So because I think the one will get stronger, I'm going to get a loan in yen and buy green one. I'm going to be rich in 1980. How long would I be waiting to get my money back <laughs> on that trade? Never. Why is the Korean won always undervalued against the Japanese yen? It has more uncertainty than Japan. Korea and Japan is rival to export. Yes, maybe now it's getting closer. Japan recently, this was when Japan's currency got very strong, but recently it's gotten very weak, right? So basically, Japanese products were more competitive than Korean products in the 80s and the 90s. So if Koreans wanted to sell their products, they needed to reduce the price of cheaper products, right? Yes. So in order to help their exports, they have an undervalued currency, right? So we can see China these days has an undervalued currency, okay, to help its exports. So we can't predict the future exchange rate with absolute PPP. Absolute PPP here, we'll be waiting a long time to predict the future exchange rate. Because in the real world, there are reasons why the market rate is different, right? We said haircuts, shipping costs, uh, supporting policy to support exports, that kind of thing in the real world, right? But what we can notice is that the exchange rate changes with inflation, okay? And the market rate also changes with inflation, okay? So we can use inflation to predict the future exchange rate, okay? So, this graph explains how inflation can show us over the long term. Okay, this is it showing the inflation and the market rate is following the inflation, more or less. Okay, sometimes it goes down, sometimes up, but inflation is good over the long term, not the short term. So, we can see these graphs here. If we look at 24 year interval, we can see that there's a relationship between the difference of inflation and the exchange rate. Okay? So high inflation countries, weaker currency. Low inflation currencies, stronger currency. We can make a line. Okay? But just one year, dots are, are all over the place. So inflation doesn't work well for one year. Okay? If we have very high inflation, yes, it works well. But just normal inflation, country, it's not going to help us predict the exchange rate over one year. Okay? Here we can see it's following the trend over the long term, but over one year there can be big changes. Okay? So inflation, is inflation good over the long term or the short term for predicting the exchange rate? Over the long term. Okay? And then this is the Fisher effect we talked about. An increase in the rate of inflation will cause a proportionate, the same increase in the interest rate in the country. So uh, I may be going through this a little bit quickly, but also I have some students who studied international financial management, right? They already studied about this. So I, I don't want to spend too much time on it, okay? So, uh, just for forecasting the exchange rates, we're going to just mention briefly. The first one is efficient markets approach. This means that people will say, there, you can't make any profit by forecasting the exchange rate because all of the information is available in the market today. Okay? Everybody has access to the information. There are a lot of smart people in the world. They all use the information well. So the current price is the correct price. Okay? That's what efficient markets. But where efficient markets <coughs> has, have problems, such as bubbles and so on. We talked about this in week one. Okay? So efficient markets approach would say just we can't. The current price is the correct price of the currency. Okay? Fundamental approach is uh, looking at all of the factors which affect the exchange rate and making a model. Do you understand model? Making a, like a model on Excel in the computer with numbers for all of the factors and then using this to make a guess about the future exchange rate. Okay? So this is a complete model of things which 
affect the exchange rate? Are there a lot of things which affect the exchange rate? Are there a lot of things which affect the exchange rate? Or just one or two things? A lot of things. Trade. Why? Right? Current account. Trade. Okay? How does the current account affect the exchange rate? We talked about it earlier in the course. Country with current account deficit, like the US, do we expect their currency to get weaker or stronger? To make a balanced situation. Weaker, right? Then it makes a more balanced situation. So current account, trade, what else affects? Interest rate, we talked about the interest rate. Economic growth. <coughs> Fiscal policy. Is the government spending a lot of money? What's going to happen if the government is spending a lot of money? The government is increasing the money supply. Our currency will get stronger or weaker? Weaker. Weaker. We increase the money supply, our currency will get weaker. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I give you one unit of a currency each to buy, to buy something from me, and then I give you two units each. If you have more money, you can pay a higher price to buy something from me. So increase the money supply, inflation, the currency will get weaker, okay? Monetary policy, okay, this is all in medium term. In the long term, purchasing power parity, inflation, productivity, okay? I might say, well, nowadays Korea's productivity is reaching Japan's, right? One reason Japan had an earthquake couple of years ago. So Japan lost some of its productivity and Korea caught up. Now the productivity is not far away, right? Yeah. So because Korea and Japan now has kind of similar productivity, maybe over the long term the, the currencies will get closer. Okay? And the Korean won won't be undervalued as much against the Japanese yen. Okay? These days Japanese yen is not is quite weak historically, right? but also their productivity has gone down, okay? Uh, so these kind of things, in the short term, what affects the exchange rate? None of these things, not in the short term. In the short term, trend following. Do you, just people copying each other. Invest, investor sentiment, how do investors feel? Are they risk on or risk off? Okay, risk on, maybe we'll invest in developing countries. Risk off, we'll invest in US dollar and Germany, okay? Uh, risk appetite, investor positioning, okay? So it's not easy to predict in the short term. Anything can happen because we have these guys like George Soros. We saw that George Soros was able to bring down the Bank of England with trillions of dollars in his fund, okay? So of course he's going to be able to affect the movement of the exchange rate over three months or four months or five months, but maybe not over one year or two years or three years, okay? So discuss with your partner then, what are the short term, medium term and long term factors which affect the exchange rate? <coughs> and look at this diagram, right? So discuss, ask your partner, what are the short term, what are the medium term, what are the long term factors which affect the exchange rate? This document is in the reading file. Week 9. Reading. Okay? Tell your partner at least two factors that affect the exchange rate in the short term, the medium term, and the long term. Thank you. 
Short term, what affects the exchange rate in the short term? Lu uh, uh, E on G. Yes, what affects the exchange rate in the short term? Trey hmm? So Young, what affects the exchange rate in the short term? Interest rate in the short term or medium term? Short term. Can you see it here? <laughs> hmm? Where can you see interest rate on the graph? Interest rate is here. The medium. Trey Quay Jump. What affects the exchange rate in the short term? Yang Hyung Sok? What is trend following? Do you follow the fashion trend? Do you follow the fashion trend? No? What is the fashion trend these days? Well, you told me you like fashion. What's the fashion trend these days? Fashion trend? No. Nowadays, nowadays work home. Korean fashion is very bad, so... Mask? Wearing masks? No. <laughs> That's just your fashion? My identity. Your identity? Yeah. What's the trend? Does anybody know? The trend is... Basically. What's the trend for fashion this season? <coughs> hmm? Girls, you don't know? Trench what? <laughs> trench coat. Trench coat? Do you have trench coat? Are you following the trend? Yes? Okay, so just following the trend means copying the other people. Okay? So everybody is selling the dollar. Right? The dollar's getting weaker. I'm going to sell the dollar too. Then I can make a profit too, right? 
George, I see on Bloomberg, George Soros says, sell the dollar. George Soros is selling the dollar. The dollar price is going down. What am I going to do? I can see, oh, George Soros is making a profit. I want to make a profit too by copying George Soros. I'm going to get a loan in dollars, sell the dollar, buy euros. Right? Do you understand? Yes. Then yes, I made a profit. How? Copy. Did I think for myself? No. no. No? What did I do? Copy I copied George Soros. George Soros is smart. <laughs> I'm not smart. I'll just copy him. So sometimes, do you know Albert Einstein? Yes. Yeah. Albert Einstein didn't like the financial markets because even though he was really smart, he couldn't do well. <laughs> So he gave his money to another friend who wasn't that smart. And he did very well on the financial markets. Copying other people. Right? Do you understand? Yes. Albert Einstein might say, Oh, look at the interest rate differential, or the productivity, or the purchasing power parity. The US dollar is going to get stronger. Right? But then George Soros comes along and starts selling the US dollar. Okay? Einstein pulls out his hair. Oh, no! <laughs> what happened? It should get, no, no, it should get stronger. It doesn't make sense. Okay? So, that's an important warning for financial markets, okay? You can think you know about what's going to happen because of some factor. You may be right, Einstein may be right, but he's going to have to wait for three years. Okay? He's going to have to wait for five years. He's going to have to wait for ten years. That's why most people have a long-term investing strategy. Okay? Because in the short term, we, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Okay? Opposite to what we think or believe. So if you invest just for six months, you're wasting your time. Okay? Because in six months, anything can happen. Right? But the people who invest for six months, maybe they have some inside information or they, they just copy the big investors. Okay? So you don't have to be very smart to be good at investing. They say that they need a different kind of intelligence, kind of practical intelligence, to be a good investor. Do you understand practical intelligence? Yeah. Yes, over the short term. But over the long term, these, you can analyze these factors and make a prediction for the exchange rate over the long term. Okay. So let's take a break there for 10 minutes.